Hey guys, it's Seawheel HD here, and today we're going to be covering glitches in the classic 2D Mario game, New Super Mario Bros. Wii. There are over 20 glitches this game has to offer, including getting out of bounds, three ways to get infinite lives, and even a brand new glitch that was only discovered a few months ago. I can't wait to get into this game, so let's do it. Let's kick this off with a glitch that's actually kinda useful, clipping through solid objects using Yoshi. So all we need is Yoshi and some unbreakable blocks. Start by holding crouch, jump, and as soon as you two are about to collide with the blocks, shake your controller to dismount Yoshi. Since you're smushed up against the blocks, the game has no choice but to force Mario through the blocks and pop out above them, which is pretty cool in my opinion. This should be possible virtually anywhere you have this kind of setup. It's also pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Fun fact, this glitch is still possible 13 years later in another Mario game, Mario Maker 2 within the new Super Mario Bros. engine. Except it has a more useful effect clipping through invisible blocks meant to troll you, so I was pretty familiar with this tech already. Regardless, it's fun to do, looks cool, and is actually useful. Sticking with Yoshi and this movement, there's a similar setup that allows us to infinitely flutter with him. We pretty much have to do the same movement as clipping through blocks, but this time we don't crouch. Jump and flutter up to something solid above you, and as you hit your head, shake to dismount Yoshi. But since you're too close to him, Mario will immediately snap back on, resetting the flutter. Just repeat this process over and over, and you'll never have to touch the ground again. World 1-3 is a very good spot to try this out in. This quote-unquote cave section with a roof allows us to travel along the top, avoiding everything below. This also showcases that you can gain height while doing this, allowing you to do things like grab the star coin all the way up here. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of locations in the game that have a good setup for this. Sure, you can do this in place virtually anywhere, but getting actual use out of it is kind of trivial, as you need to have a ceiling above you, so you can't just infinite flutter everywhere. In World 4-1, there's a way we can clip under the world. I'd recommend a penguin suit as it allows us to swim in any direction without sinking, aka we don't have to mash A the whole time. Plus there's a suit right at the beginning of the level. Carry it a good ways through the level until you come across this pillar and hill connecting. From here, just keep holding crouch to smush Mario's face up against the wall and tap down so he slowly scales down the pillar. After a few taps off screen, you'll see the camera move to the right, meaning we clipped out. There's two options from this point. The first is that you can just swim up through the pillar and end up inside. There's some pretty buggy collisions so it's tough to swim around in here, but you're also now completely stuck. There's no way to get back out from this point, and I ended up spamming snowballs which created a pretty neat visual effect, but that's really about it. Pause, exit the level, and try again. This time clip out and just keep swimming to the right. Now we can scroll through the level without Mario being on screen at all. These sea urchins looked pretty impressed Mario was pulling this stunt off. But you can't beat the level this way either, as you just come to a stop at this pipe. So your only options from this point are to restart, or swim all the way back to where we clipped out from, and just resume normal play from there. So not super useful, but still kind of fun nonetheless. Now in World 5-5, there are these floating boys and propeller blocks. Grab the one at the start of the level and carry it all the way to the checkpoint flag. From this point, you'll notice this secret passage with a POW block. We're going to be using both of these to clip through the floor. Stand next to the POW, let go of the propeller, and pick up the POW. If you time this correctly, the propeller will bounce and end up on top of the POW, so you're now holding both. From this point, all we gotta do is spin to drop the blocks, and it'll shove us underneath this platform, which ultimately causes us to drop to our death. Nice. There's again no real use for this, but it's kind of fun to pull off, even though it's a pain to restart the whole level in between attempts. So yeah, a real complicated setup just to die in a unique way. Moving on to a glitch that I'd categorize as useless entertainment. It doesn't help us in any way, but it's still kind of funny. In 2-5, there's a Lakitu throwing spiny shells down on you. There's also a Yoshi we can ride around on. Combine these two things and a wall for some of that useless entertainment. At this point in the level, there's quicksand that will cause you to... sink. Have Yoshi eat a spiny and begin sinking while hugging one of these walls. When you're down in it, spit out the shell and it should do this. Become stuck in the wall, rapidly bouncing back and forth, creating this lovely noise. Ah yes, how pleasant. It took me some time to actually pull this off as you have to spit out the spinies at certain points in the wall. Kind of like Mario Maker where it's just a big grid of blocks, you have to slot the spiny in between two rows of blocks to get it stuck. There are multiple spots you can pull this off in the level, and more spinies create more noise. I ended up getting three stuck at one point, and if I had to hear this for 10 minutes, you can survive another 5 seconds. Like I said, pretty much any point in this level that there's quicksand and a wall, you can do this glitch. But there's even another level that's possible, World 4-5. We get the same parameters of Yoshi and Lakitu, and I was able to pull it off at this pipe by jumping and spitting it out at the right time. We get the same noise and a very shaky spiny. Luckily, when you're done ruining your ears, running a little ways off screen will despawn the spiny, and the noise will stop. Ah. 
World 1-6 has these rolling hills just before the flagpole. By bringing a propeller suit here, we can do a neat little teleport. We need to fall below the screen and then spin just before the game kills us. So you can either run against the roll and then let go quickly, or just risk it and jump down. Spinning while below the screen will cause Mario to rise and teleport a little ways through the hill. The game is trying to keep Mario out of the inside of the hill, so teleporting is the only real way to do that. Not really worth the risk of dying and losing your propeller, but if you're skilled enough, it can be kind of cool. Going back to torturing spinies, this one takes place in World 6-2, the cave level. It's littered with spinies crawling around things. We need to find one that's crawling underneath breakable blocks, such as here. Next, we need to use an ice flower or penguin suit to throw snowballs and freeze the spiny. While it's frozen under here, quickly run over and break the blocks it was walking on. Then run a little bit away so the spiny doesn't immediately lock onto you. The result is this. The spiny is now incredibly confused as to where it's supposed to go and decides to float. It'll continuously wiggle back and forth, but if you look closely, it's also rising ever so slightly. Seriously, it's like one pixel at a time. It's very slow. After waiting over three minutes, the spiny will finally connect with the top of the ceiling and begin behaving a little more normal. I say a little just because it's still locked onto this little part. It doesn't go all the way down. From this point, there's really nothing else you can do except have it fall and continuing the level like normal. Next up is one of my personal favorites, reviving a dead chain chomp. That's a weird sentence. Start in world seven and run over to the second level. Before entering, we need to equip a star power up. So open your menu and slap that bad boy on. Once in the level, you will find a chain chomp tied to this post. If we ground pound it three times, it'll obviously just break out and run away. But ground pound twice quickly, run into the chain chomp with your star, killing it, and then ground pound the third time. The already dead chain chomp will come back alive and try and run away, clipping through everything. I guess the animation of it breaking free overrides the fact that it's dead, so this happens. There are a few different results that can come out of this depending on when you ground pound the third time. If it's still above the ground, it'll run along it, clipping through this wall. But if it's already below, it'll pop back out for a brief moment before just falling into the clouds. I enjoyed this one a lot for some reason, but I don't even know if you guys find it interesting. Back on Yoshi glitches, this one takes place in 4-5 where that stuck spiny thing was possible. Anyway, this time we're heading to the end of the level while riding Yoshi. Locate this pipe of the piranha plant and run into the side of it so Yoshi runs off towards the flagpole. Wait here for a few seconds or until you stop hearing Yoshi's feet pitter-pattering, and then chase him down. You may not see him at first, but eventually he'll run back towards you and get stuck here. He is now infinitely running in this spot and there's nothing you can do to stop it. I was hoping I could fly over the flagpole and join him, but I forgot that is not possible in this game. So the only real option is to beat the level and watch the ending cutscene play out while Yoshi is running frantically next to you. Sorry, Yosh. This next one is pretty crazy. It takes place in World 4's Boo House and is the only time we'll be in one of these. Well, in the first section, there are these platforms that rise and fall when you stand on them. Locate this one near the end of the room that reveals a door when it shifts down. Enter it and immediately begin holding left. There is a boo on this wall and by pushing Mario up against it, the boo will rapidly cover and uncover his eyes, constantly switching between the two states. Yep, that's it. Pretty crazy, right? This will continue until the other boo in the room creeps over and kills you. But uh, looking back on this footage, I'm pretty sure I could have just turned around in place to prevent him from coming. Oops. This one's pretty unique. It takes place during some boss fights, but I'll just be using the Larry fight in World 1 Fortress. You'll notice that there are these pits on both sides with the ability to wall jump. This will be important in a second. Land two hits on him, and you'll want to position the third so you can jump off and immediately go over the pit. From this point, just repeatedly wall jump in this tiny section. You'll notice that the music stops and the ending sequence does not play out. You can stay here as long as you want, but immediately after landing back on the ground, it'll play out like normal. Just a neat little way to delay the ending of a boss fight, I'd imagine this is possible in other worlds, if you have the ability to wall kick like this. Moving on to a little segment of glitches that can get you infinite lives. There are three methods, each with their own unique setups and outcomes. These are also some of the most interesting glitches in the game. Like, what is going on here? Anyway, the first is the classic method, jumping off of a Koopa shell. If you've played a 2D Mario before, you probably know where I'm going with this. The best location I found to do this at is at the end of World 2-3. After exiting the pipe, there is a staircase with a Koopa climbing down. We need to stand in place so Mario doesn't drift from side to side and wait for the Koopa to come onto our step. Jump so you land back down on the left side of the Koopa so the shell stays stuck between Mario and the stair. From this point, you don't have to do anything. Just sit back and watch Mario bounce on the shell repeatedly, racking up all the lives you want. I also just really enjoyed watching the Koopa shell do this slow rotation around. Not even moving, just going in circles. When you're at the max 99, you can hop off and beat the level. Or accidentally die. 
Now for the second method and a really interesting side effect. In the World 4 castle, we're going to need an ice flower, so I believe you have to bring one there, as there's none in the actual level. Carefully maneuver through the castle until you reach this spot with Koopas climbing around these flippable grids. Position Mario so he's hanging onto the cage, and then wait for a Koopa to be on the front side climbing across the flippable part. We need to quickly jump, shoot a snowball at the Koopa, and then immediately re-grab the panel and flip it. All super fast like this. The result will immediately be apparent. The Koopa ice block will immediately start shooting out endless coins rapidly. Like, look at this. It's nuts. If you don't go and collect them, the game will start lagging like crazy, slowing down to as little as two frames a second. So I recommend grabbing them before you can barely move. If you cling onto the panel directly above the ice, you'll collect every single coin that comes out, netting you roughly 50 coins a second. That is crazy. It also looks really cool seeing Mario's hands sparkle like this. You'll notice that the Koopa is somehow climbing across the ice block now, which I don't know how that's possible. Like I said, if you stand off to the side, an absurd amount of coins will begin piling up like a snake below you. The music doesn't slow down, but literally everything else does. As painful as this footage looks, I promise you it's not edited in any way. This is how slow the game gets after only a few seconds. You can speed it back up by hopping down and collecting them, but my god is it annoying to do this while the game is a PowerPoint slideshow. But yeah, not only can you get unlimited coins and lives in a matter of seconds, your score also rises rapidly too. So this glitch makes it really easy to get to the max of 99 million points. There's a lot you can get out of this glitch, so if you're gonna do any, probably do this one. If you thought that one was crazy though, this one might just have it beat. This is also the first glitch we'll be showing off that requires two players. You don't actually need friends though. I did them all myself, don't worry. <coughs> anyway, it takes place in World 1-3, making it the earliest infinite lives glitch. But this one's much more than that. Grab the two Yoshis at the beginning of the level and come over to this section with Koopas. We need a shell in both of Yoshi's mouths, so eat the first two you see and keep them there. We now need to perform a team ground pound, or as the wiki calls it, a synchro ground pound. Basically, just both of you need to ground pound at the same time while riding Yoshi. Doing so while the Koopa shells are in your mouths creates a glitch state for the Koopas. They should be dead, but having them inside Yoshi causes them to survive. So what's the result? Invincible Koopas. The first side effect I want to show is using a propeller suit. Spit out one of the shells, jump on it, and pick it up. Propeller up while holding the shell, and then hold down. You'll spin downwards toward the ground and create this. A stream of like 21 ups in a split second. It also sounds kind of satisfying as well. Visually, this is one of the more crazy things in this game. So yeah, you can max out on lives after a couple rounds of this, but eventually the shell shook and the Koopa came back out, damaging me. But that's fine, because there's plenty more side effects. Spit out both shells and have them sliding along the ground here. When they collide with one another, they don't break, they just phase through each other, creating this flash of light accompanied by a neat little noise. So that's all fine and dandy, but the fun really begins when you toss one perfectly on top of the other. It creates a shooting star effect sliding along the ground, but the sound is pretty painful. So these Koopa shells are more or less invincible. As you can see, if one is stopped, you can use Yoshi to infinitely bounce off the shell. Even when the Koopa comes back out, he is unfazed that you and Yosh are constantly pounding on his head. So yeah, just by doing a synchro ground pound with the Koopa shells in Yoshi's mouth will create an iron Koopa, immune to death, with the ability to get infinite lives and create shooting stars. An absolutely crazy glitch here. Sticking with two-player glitches, these may not be as useful, but they sure are interesting. As you're probably aware, pressing A during multiplayer allows you to be in a bubble. Have one player stand near the flagpole while the other jumps at it and bubbles right as they touch the pole. The timing is very precise, but if done correctly, the player will go invisible inside of the bubble, and this happens. The camera freaks out, I guess trying to find Mario, and pans all the way to the beginning of the level. The game is now softlocked, even with the clouds moving in the background. Your only option now is to reset the game. This looks really cool to me as it's super zoomed in and the camera just has a mind of its own. Even better is that it's possible in virtually any level in the game that has a flagpole. Like here, I pulled it off in a snow level and it took me all the way back to the pipe we entered through. Side note, this could also be a very easy way to annoy your friends that you're playing with. Literally all you have to do is bubble at just the right time and you've successfully ruined the level for the rest of the squad and they have to reset the game. Sticking with this same setup, what happens if both players are in bubbles? So just have player 2 already in a bubble, run at the flagpole, and bubble right as you make contact. Mario should go invisible again, and the game pauses before playing the flag sound, but freezes after that. 
The music cuts out and both players will slowly drift off the screen. Never to be seen again. Like before, the level is still alive, but nothing else happens, so we're soft locked again. Only thing to do now, like before, is reset the game. So I like the single bubble better, as there's at least some side effect you can get out of it. Let's continue this three glitch streak with one last effect, touching the flagpole right as the timer reaches zero. This is an absolute pain to attempt as you have to wait multiple minutes in between them, but if you can stomach that, this will be the result. The other player dies on the spot with the time's up text coming in. But as you can see, we got points and Mario is now inside the flagpole. After player two falls off the screen, a small sequence plays out with Mario actually grabbing the pole, but nothing else happens from this point. Player two will slowly float onto the screen in a bubble and can shake to get closer, but it won't pop. So again, we're soft locked. A reset is your only fate out of this, and it's definitely not worth the 30 minutes you'll likely spend pulling this off. All right, those were kind of underwhelming, but here's a neat two-player glitch involving clipping into walls. I'm going to start this demonstration in World 5-4, but it is possible in other levels. You just need a tight corner that you guys can barely fit into. I couldn't find a consistent setup for this, but pretty much just pick up the other player while yourself is up against a wall and a low ceiling. And with a little bit of luck, the other player will end up clipping through out of bounds. From this point, you can move a little bit, but the only real option is to crouch and press jump. This will force the character up one row of blocks, still stuck. You can spam power-ups if you have one, which looks kind of cool, but you can also continue to jump up until you're above the ceiling. When up high enough, you have the freedom to run left and right. As you can see here, when I bubble, I'm all the way on the left, not where I clipped out from. But I don't think it's possible to actually come back inbounds after you clip out. You just have to bubble and hope the other player pops it. Another spot this is possible in is World 3's castle. Near the beginning of the stage is this pipe. Just like the first, I kind of just spam pickup until I saw Luigi go through. Just like the first time, there isn't really a lot to do, but this attempt I ended up having Mario bubble to try and link back up with Luigi. But he was too high off the screen to get anything. I've seen this glitch used in other levels, but you get the idea. It's possible in a lot of areas that you see this sort of setup. These mini bosses you run into on the overworld have a glitch as well. After defeating all the enemies and grabbing the toad bubble things, a chest will spawn. After touching it with either character, it'll pop open. However, if you bubble right as the chest would activate, you can delay it until the character pops out of that bubble. As you can see here, I'm nowhere near the chest, but I guess the action to open it got stored, so I opened it all the way from over here. Pretty minor, but still pretty neat. All right, moving on to something that's not even in the main game. This time we're heading to the two player coin battle option. Select the first level coin dash one and play through the entire thing. At the flagpole, there are these paratroopers. Have one character bounce on them to gain enough height and then ground pound down to the flagpole. The level will end, but never end. The ground pound got stored, and as you can see, when Mario hops off, the blocks below behave like Mario ground pounded onto them. For some reason, this prevents Mario from ever ending the level, so you just get stuck here. Kinda like Yoshi from before. To my knowledge, this is the only place that this is possible in, as no other level throughout the entire game has these bricks after the flagpole. Super weird, but it's also probably the easiest soft lock in the game. Plus, it would really annoy the people you're playing with. And finally, the newest glitch that has been discovered within this game, above the castle. In the final level of the game is this big Bowser fight. You break the bridge the first time super easily, and then it turns out that it's not Peach, and a second phase begins. It starts off by having giant Bowser shooting fireballs at you, and you must use them to break a path open to escape. This section is kind of long and tedious, so speedrunners have been looking for a way to get around it. Thanks to a discovery by speedrunner Cryptic, it's possible to break out of the top of the ceiling and run past this section. The setup is probably the hardest out of anything I've covered today, so listen up. And I do mean listen, as this involves audio cues. As soon as Bowser comes back on screen and you can control Mario, begin holding down left on the D-pad. This will provide us with the setup for the first part. Now here's the tricky step. We need a propeller at just the right time while keeping down left held the whole time. You want to spin as the sixth note begins to play in the background music. Yes, you have to listen to the music. Have a listen, and I'll put numbers on screen to show you what notes I'm talking about. It's pretty tight, only allowing for six frames of leeway. So after spinning, keep holding down left from before until you see a fireball spit out of Bowser. Then you can hold right and go back to the platform. If you time this perfectly, the fireball will create this pattern in the wall. That's step one complete. Now the pressure's on. You want to propel her up to the crack and crouch jump into the one by one gap. Once inside, you need to stand up, which will cause Mario to slide to the right and as your feet are about to pop through to the opening below, crouch again and spam jump six times. You can jump more than that, I just mashed it, but there are six required total to get out. From this point, congratulations, you have done a fairly difficult speedrunning skip. 
You are now free to run right until you reach the second section. You are forced to drop down here so you can't skip the whole thing, but you've successfully skipped the fireball portion and can just platform to the end. No more waiting. I'm gonna go back and play this glitch in real time with the audio just so you get the complete picture. <laughs> So yeah, pretty difficult and very precise. It also kind of sucks that if you mess up the timing on the first propeller, there's nothing you can really do. You either have to die or restart the level. But it was incredibly satisfying to pull off and I was super nervous during the last platforming section here after getting it. But yeah, you can shave off those precious seconds and beat the game a little earlier than you should. So there were a whole bunch of glitches in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. I probably put hundreds of hours into this game as a kid and annoyed the heck out of my sister playing co-op back in the day. Shout out Brooke. I'm sorry. So it was very nostalgic coming back to this game practically 10 years later. It's also sort of making a resurgence in popularity thanks to recent mods and speedruns, so it's only fitting that I cover the game as well. If you're in the mood for more Mario, I've made a bunch of glitches on other Mario games. Even a big old 30 minute one on Mario Galaxy about a month ago. So check those out if you're so inclined. But for now, I'm gonna get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!